Welcome back to the second part of mountain flying. Let's jump right into it and let's see we start there with the scope and there's one or two items we're going to look at wind assessment and contours and wind. Oh but well, that looks like it's very short. Well it may be that it's look short but there's a lot to say about the subject so we're going to jump well I'm going to jump right into it and the wind assessment and I just need us to have a look at this uh, photograph here and just get a little bit of an inclination. Yes, it's a pretty picture. Yes, I took it uh, and that kind of, this is on top in the Drakensberg and you can see this nice saddle here but also when the wind is flowing over the mountain like this it's got one serious downdraft here on this side here and this could become a very, very, very turbulent area right here next to the rock face. To get on top of the mountain in a case like this is well you know we've got to make uh, pretty much sure th that we are higher than the mountain and that now no, it's difficult to draw it but that we higher the mountain and then we can descend on top of the mountain here but you cannot um, overfly you don't want to go through the, the excessive turbulent areas but let's have a look what I've got here and uh, in this picture, we'll start off here with the normal mountain range. Okay, so this is all mountain here that we've, we've got. The wind is blowing quite nicely steady over and here is where you must start visualizing the wind. And when I say visualizing the wind, I need you to picture wind as water. You can see the wind coming up. It must flow over the top. It will go over. And what's going to happen on the leeward side? So you'll get the windward or the upwind side, the windward side, which will be this side. And the other side is the leeward side. Here I've got a helicopter there. And, um, but let's have a look at the picture just for a second more. You'll see I have uh, pinned in here the updraft area. In other words, everything goes up. And this is the downdraft, everything goes down. So if I take the same picture, then you can see that there, because the air is coming up, it might just have a rotor there and carry on. So there will be a, an area with serious turbulence, you can say. And here up top, I've got in what we call a demarcation line. It is a line that demarcates, it marks the line between what is flowing up and what is flowing down. That's the demarcation line. Well, that's a very important line because it depends. Are you on the updraft side or are you on the downdraft side? Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Obvious, everything has got to do with you know what kind of wind we've got but if I look at the at, at the next slide I've prepared for you then you'll see I've got a, a little bit of a red area that I pulled in here and that's on the leeward side or the the descending and the turbulent side if I put this little helicopter in there then I've got a problem all right so mm, this downdraft side below the summit is a little bit of a problem okay so let's go on and then I say, mm, because of the demarcation line on top of the mountain, hey, we've got even here a little space that we can say, mm, it's not too bad. It's probably the area that we want, and that's the upwind side of the demarcation line. Now, here you can already see, if I fly in from here, I'm in trouble. If I fly from here, I've got a little bit of trouble because I've got a tailwind. That's not going to be good. So I'll probably have to come in and move in above, let's call it the bad areas, if you wish. A uh, little bit of a statement. The wind strength coupled to the size and shape of the pinnacle. Now the pinnacle is this part that I'm talking about. The pinnacle will determine how steep the demarcation line is. And there's the steepness. Let's say the mountain was like that and the wind goes over, you could have, for instance, a very shallow 
demarcation line it's up here and it only from there starts downdraft so the demarcation line is in fact defined by the pinnacle and again just visualize this sharp little piece of mountain I mean there's going to be serious up and down draft flat it's going to go up and then there's going to be a relatively calm period and then a downdraft again there are many plateaus up there that you can use very successfully to land. Um, obviously, I'm dramatizing here a little bit more with the pinnacles. Well, but I mean, I've been on these pinnacles before. And if you end up in the bad side of the pinnacle, you're going to fall out of the sky. And then you just hope that you don't touch the side of the mountain and that you fall and that you can regain control of the helicopter. Other side, otherwise, um, you know, that would have been the last thing that you officially attempted. Um, uh, no, I'm not trying to dramatize this. The mountain um, has in a few cases tried to take my life. And so many helicopter pilots with mountain experience will tell you the same thing. All right? So there are rules. We've written the rules. And the rules are based on the mistakes others made and where they fell out of the sky already and got hurt and crashed the aircraft and all that. Most of the exercises in the mountain is caused by people, well, they're caused by people going up to the mountain and they think because they've got this aircraft they can. There is no mountain where the helicopter can outperform the forces available inside Mother Nature up in the mountain. You have to get over that position. We in the lower region and we are only but visitors up there. All right. Just a little bit with the contours. I've just said, okay, there's the pinnacle head and then, you know, that the steeper contours here and a little bit of a flat area there and a little steeper area and stuff like that. And here I've got the helicopter put in. This time, as we, we know, we've got the downdraft area, we've got the updraft area there, I've put the wind in, and this picture is set. Now, just um, as I draw it, I think to myself, all right, yeah, maybe the wind can go straight, okay, that's fine, but yeah, it will also try and, you know, a little bit to the side there, it might go straight when, um, so again, just picture everything as uh, picture the, the wind as water and that is the part if you can see the wind you have already gone a long way to anticipate or to judge where you shouldn't be where you must stay away from here is a mountain there's a wind coming I'm flying crosswind do I um, fly past this in the upside down or the downwind side, in the lee side or in the, in the upwind side. Which side do I fly? If I am on the lee side, I'm lower than the summit, I'm going to pick up serious turbulence and there's going to be downdrafts. If I'm on the other side, I'll get a little bit of turbulence, but I'll get a lot of lift. All right? Think. Mother Nature is providing you now I know that in philosophy years we can't really make decisions and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all right. But here we can. But our decisions is actually based on knowledge. And once you apply the knowledge, then the decision is actually not a decision anymore. Because if I know where the updrafts and I know where the downdrafts and I know where the area is to avoid, then it's like, okay, now that's not a decision. We have deduced the answer from applying the facts. Ah. Just um, you know, the way that we, we talk. Yeah, we've also got a demarcation line. I mean, yeah, I said, okay, there, there's an updraft and a downdraft area. I've, I've just showed you a little bit there. Um, on your downdraft area, where's the red area? Now, I obviously make it red because I don't want you to be there. But there's the green area on top of the hill. So here you've got an updraft. You are flying into wind from this side. 
All right. You do not want to be below the summit in the downdraft area. You also, well, there's various ways of getting there. So, so maybe let's, let, we, we'll get to how to get onto the mountain. Well, there are a couple of cautions there. Okay, that's also, th this is also taken from, I think, 9,300 9, 9, 9, foot up in the mountain. The wind in the mountain areas, never constant wind close to the ridge or amongst different ridges. Ooh, I need you to imprint that in your mind. Wind in the mountain areas, never a constant, especially when you're closed. And remember, everything. Every part of the mountain is influencing the rest of the part. A lot of people thinking that if you're in a big city and amongst the, the buildings you can fly your helicopters. That's even more difficult. Because now the wind goes absolutely crazy. And the finesse of which you will see many times how the people are amongst the... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can simulate things like that on a computer and maybe in a studio. It's going to be very, very difficult in a real case. When there's 8 knots, 10 knots wind, man, that makes it just very difficult. Let me um, say uh, the next thing is I say wind can change very quickly due to the normal weather systems. Obviously. I mean, you, you, uh, let me get a pen there and say... And let's say this is the side of the mountain going up and there's the top of the mountain and it goes down. And here's the sun shining on this side. All right. This area will heat up and the air will start rising. It's, it's not a story. That's how it is. So if you understand the physics and everything is right, you can actually climb a mountain using sun power. It's not difficult. But if there's a serious downdraft and the wind is trying to rise, which is going to be the strongest? All right. So remember, no factor will stand on its own. You've got to take the whole thing into consideration and that's got to be up, under, below and everything. Every approach requires a wing check every approach every approach yo but i just landed there well how long ago sir 10 minutes more than enough for the weather to have done its thing yes we are in the circuit if it's one one minute two minutes so on so on and when we've got other indications the wind is still steady where it is blah 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 of course it's fine you can carry on but remember a wind check doesn't mean we're going to go through a five-minute ritual to the south side of the wind. We check the wind, but we just keep the wind in mind all the time for every approach. And that's what I mean by checking. Okay. Wind assessment. Wind is a major player in the mountains and has the highest contribution to accidents. And the following ways um, are there to determine. All right. So... Whoa, I've said something here that should let everybody... The major player is the highest contributing factor to accidents. Now, that was so difficult for me to say, okay, this is the biggest one, because I didn't talk about density. Now, the moment that I put a little bit of density in there, and I, well, or a lot of density change in there, and I talk about wind, the combination just comes um, outside the scope or the limits of your helicopter. And maybe yourself. All right? But we think we can walk on water. Well, you know, if you are fast enough, you can walk on water. Do you know how fast you must be to walk on air? All right. It's just one of those things. Helicopter instruments. The windy direction and strength is graphically presented in the helicopter's GPS, air data system, and stuff like that. All right. Now, now people say... Okay, I'm seeing that the indicated airspeed is 80 knots and uh, we've got a ground speed of 90 knots, therefore I've got a tailwind. Yes, I agree. Very nice way to do de the de de deductive reasoning and that makes sense. But do you know exactly where it comes from? You're talking about a tailwind component of 10 knots. 
Well, it's better than nothing because when I then turn around 180, I will have a headwind component of 10 degrees. But remember, that does not mean that's the strength of the wind. You could be a couple of degrees off. All right. Any headwind component is better than any tailwind component. All right. That makes you happy. All right. So we can use this. A couple of telltale signs that, that I just wanted to bring to your attention again, and that's the cloud movement. Now, cloud movement, and remember I'm talking about that close to the mountain. All right. And if it's close to the mountain, you can actually see the clouds will form and um, they, they, the, the wind will make them uh, dance in the way that the wind is actually blowing grass and trees. Well, many high mountains you won't miss. I mean, you're not going to get uh, uh, grass and trees, you know, beyond, uh, beyond 12 or whatever in the Andes. But uh, in the Drakensberg, uh, 10,000, 11,000 feet, you're going to get grass. Is one of those things. Um, and now the amount of flutter on the grass blades is normally a good indication of the wind strength. Water masses, that leaves you a very, very uh, pronounced trail. And if there's water masses up there, that's fine. Birds, birds normally take off into wind unless they disrupt and they have to get airborne in a hurry. In the higher regions, close to the cliff, vultures and bigger species eagles will seek up drafts to afford effortless flying. There's the mountain. They will fly here and there is an updraft. They will never hang around in the downdraft. Well, that makes sense. So, well, it even makes sense to the birds. All right. And then the last one, there is smoke. Uh, from wherever the smoke comes in, it, it'll give you that. Now, the second method that I'm looking at is the pinnacle method. Now, there's a couple things about the pinnacle method. Now, let me just draw and say if this is the mountain and that is the pinnacle. All right, so this is the mountain. If you could fly around the mountain below the summit, then let's say the wind is from here, okay, and here it will have... a little bit of a downdraft. So in this area now, let me just change here. In this area, there's a downdraft. And if I have to stay the same height, I will probably, you know, the speed will be influenced. All right, because I'm going to have to lift the nose to compensate. I'm, I'm keeping the power and everything a constant, eh? So the speed will reduce because of the downdraft. I also should find a little bit of turbulence there. On the side of the mountain will be pretty okay. And on the updraft side, doesn't matter which way we're flying on there, we're going to see the helicopter wants to climb and you have to maintain the same height. Therefore, um, it's just another energy, which is the upflow that you're putting into speed. That means this is the updraft, that's the downdraft side. Okay, so the pinnacle method is taught in Abbey Nisha helicopters and although the pinnacle landing is not to be attempted, this method still holds true determining the wind heading and speed. Uh, okay, um, not saying that in Abbey Nisha we're going to do all the pinnacles, but I wanted to just describe what it looks like, you know, what I'm talking about here. Now the pilot is set, but I'm in circular flying relatively close to the pinnacles and below the summit that we've now showed on the picture. The power and the height is to be remained. Look here, the power and the height is to remain a constant. If you keep the power and height a constant, then you will get a resultant speed. And the speed that you get will now, well, you'll aim for something like 60 knots or if it's big helicopters, 90 knots. And as you go along, it wants to climb, you push the nomad forward, you get a 10 knot increase in wind and then you'll have to slow down and you get 80 knots and then you know okay this is the up and this is the down draft it's really not a big deal now the target speed to determine the minimum turn which in turn depends on the size of the pinnacle and the entry 60 to 70 knots that's just a little for small helicopters indication when the helicopter enters the downwind side of the pinnacle it will counter a down draft which will necessitate a higher attitude 
and the power moment, therefore the speed will reduce. Now we know on the upwind or updraft side, the opposite will take. And the pilot can now picture the wind direction that would cause the up and down draft to be. And, and, and I mean, this is what we want to do. And the amount of airspeed uh, gained or lost to maintain the height, uh, that's a good indication of the wind strength as well. And then the last one here from the information, the public able to predict the demarcation line position. That sort of makes sense because what we what I said here is if that is the mountain there and we've been turning around the mountain here and here we've got lots of updrafts and here we've got lots of downdrafts, then somewhere between the up and down drafts there must be a line and that's called the demarcation line. And now I know which is the upside part and I know which is the down wind side. Right, let me clear this and then uh, now we're going to talk about the clear air method. Wow. Now, um, uh, I had the opportunity in uh, South America to, to actually fly in Chile in the Andes and the guy showed me you know, when they, there's no, that's, it's just flat places and uh, high plateaus and it's not the little pinnacles that we have in our area. It's just high and mean mountains and, uh, you know, there it's a mountain head, it's not a little pinnacle. So they use the clear air method and just, let's just run through it. It is, in fact, an excellent method and it always works. It works like a bomb. So, no, no, no. No. That's just an expression. It does not explode. Okay. Clear air method in the clear air is normally used when the landing is to be formed in a plateau of the general wind. Uh, okay, now let me get rid of that and put in there. Uh, landings performed on a plateau or if the general wind is to be turned before flying a performed valley or in between hills or whatever the case might be. The pilots should select an area above the highest pinnacle to be clear of turbulence. Okay, now how high be, behind that? Well, the, it obviously depends on the wind speed. So normal, you know, wind speeds. Uh, I was there taught 500 feet above the house point. Uh, then it's, the air is still enough with the up and down drafts so that you actually can determine a drift because if I fly here and I get pushed on this direction it means there must be a speed a wind speed in that direction okay so it makes sense but I said the circular motion 60 50 to 60 20 degrees bank maintain a constant around a center point okay so now we're going to keep speed a constant and bank a constant obviously height must be a constant eh? the speed Need to be kept a constant, but power, height, and bank needs to be. Oh, what I say? The speed need not to be a constant, although I've just said it wants to be a constant, so I would like to, to yeah, all right. Um, out of all of them, uh, the power, the height, and the bank, and everything, again. But bank is now our biggest problem, because we want a, a very, very definite Turn of bank, bank, and, I, and and the speed must be, you know, because a constant bank angle, different speed, means a different radius. So, and keep everything a constant, as best you can, and you'll see it. After the second complete circuit, the pilot will notice the center point has now shifted, and the drift direction will give you a very very accurate. Uh, wind indication and you can derive the speed from that from the infrared pilots due to reduce the wind perform in between the hills and over the pinnacles and he is to visualize the up and down draft areas and now you can form the picture so um, l let me just uh, get to this one and let's get all the pictures in there they should be and this is the famous place called Gatberg a uh, hole in the mountain and you can see it uh, in the background there. But let me just take that away now. All right. Um, 
you visualize the wind as water. If I would fly up here all the time, then after a while, my circuit is going to be there, then my circuit is going to be there, then my circuit is going to be there, as the wind drifts me across. All right? So this height, we say minimum 500 feet clear, and then you can do your thing. All right, however, if I look at this picture, it says they visualize the wind as water flowing. Now, that is what I wanted here to see as well. Um, if I look in the background here, uh, this mountain here, and, 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 and as it goes, and here's another mountain piece going up there, and this one is going down here, and here's another mountain going up. Man, there are, there are so many mountain pieces, and they all interfere, and they're blocking the wind, and the wind is ducking left and right, and it goes up and over, and turbulent flow, and all that kind of stuff. So, yes we need to be able to read and see the wind. Just another picture. All I wanted to say is if the wind comes from the side, which I said, then there will be a tendency for the, the wind to go into the valley, but it will be forced up on the other side. There is no way that the winds can go in here and it can't go straight this mountain. It is forced up. So, um, if it was an escarpment that ended up in the sea, then it will flow down and then stay level. So remember, that there must be another something in its way. And this is, this is brilliant because, I mean, what a beautiful slope to turn the wind up. If that slope was ragged and it was more like houses or buildings here, then it would have been extremely turbulent conditions there. Visualize everything as water and you'll be okay. All right, so this is then the end of the, the, the second part. Mm. All I want to leave you with is that the moment that you can see the wind, the moment you can visualize it, you can actually see where you should stay away. And then you stay away. Until next time.